I'm just going to come right out with it. I think this game was aimed towards children, or at least a family audience, because I remember playing this when I was very young, and now that I'm much, much older, I'm 20 years old now, and I still find it very, very enjoyable to play. So, I made a little review about it, and now we're going to see why I love it so much. And maybe you will too, so let's get started. What you're going to want to do is write down your name, because everything has to be informed now. But it's important for later on. This game starts out of Colono adventuring through the forest, when this magic ring thing falls from the heavens, and because we all do this, we run in, dig it up, take it home and say, Mommy, Daddy, look what I found! But lo and behold, this blue thing pops out and out your friend. So yeah, go play in the grass with your friend. While they rejoice their new friendship, some dark shit happens and naturally you've got to go and sort it out. Let's move on to gameplay. First of all, Klonoa runs at a really nice and frustrating pace. If you hit the attack button, you'll shoot out a small glowing ball that inflates enemies. And if you press the jump button twice whilst you have an inflated enemy, you'll do a double jump. You can always pull off a double jump as long as you have an enemy in stock. And if you do the double jump whilst there is no enemy in stock, you'll be suspended in the air for a short time by using your big floppy ears. These inflated enemies can also be used as weapons towards your target, to activate switches or to destroy bigger enemies. You'll be wanting to collect these floating gems as they act as a counter for your lives. As normal, collect 100 of them and you get a life. Not that you'll do much dying in this game, but it's always nice to have a running life total. And if you throw your inflated enemy at these eggs, you might get a treasure inside. It's always something different, so make sure you crack every egg for the full game experience. This game's layout is 2.5 dimensional. That means it's a side scroll except everything's a 3 dimensional plane. That means there's sprites and 3D models mixed in at once. But somehow it works, especially on a 32 bit system. They experimented, thought it would work, and they were right. A couple of things I should mention, that there are these floating symbols to collect. Getting these does nothing to your gameplay experience overall, like there's no completion bonus at the end. However, collecting them does give you a little surprise at the end. I'm not going to say what, because I want you to get the game for yourself and see, but it is fun. Also popping these clocks acts as a checkpoint if you want to know. So as you can see there's a suitable amount to this game already. With all that said and topped up with the lands and the music, this game is absolutely amazing. You'll have fun. Which is what a game is made for really, isn't it? A thing I forgot to mention, you can take a grand total of 6 hits before you die. Unless you find these small pink floating hearts or a large gold heart to replenish your health. And another thing, if you pop one of these blue fairies and collect gems, you'll collect double of the total. So don't waste them. Oh god, is that everything? Yes, now we can move on to the experience. This game starts out very cutesy wootsy. Even though the majority of this game is quite casual, there are some parts that really do test your patience and tolerance for exploring and solving different puzzles. Unless you're like me, of course, and uh, solve it in three days. As you continue, you'll notice that enemies will keep changing along with the different environments that you currently explore. And I'd like to say there's always something new in each level. Normally a video game gives you something new and interesting to play with if you explore different environments. But I mean, every level that you select, there is always something new. You'll never be disappointed. I made it to the end of this first level, as it were, and this really tall guy with a bird face is sharing words with this little fat joker face thing. Talking about some sort of pendant and how they're going to take over the world in darkness and shit. And don't worry, this boss is easier than passing gas, so you'll be fine. After beating the boss, you've got to go home and talk to Grandpa about his hemorrhoids, and then it's off to your next adventure. The direction in this game is very good, although that is to be expected for a PlayStation 1 game. It isn't as though as in the golden age of gaming where they give you slight directions on where to go, let's say, for example, Pac-Man, where you have to go around and collect all the dots. You don't know that, but that's the only thing you can do at the time, so you do it anyway, and there you go. Of course you get killed by ghosts, but again, you don't know the game objective until you try it out yourself, it's trial and error. This part of the game I absolutely love. You think the next part's going to be another forest level, but... <coughs> there isn't any water. Before we carry on, I'd like to say I'm very, very drawn to bizarre Japanese video games. Or just very bizarre games in general. I've always found myself to be more drawn towards the lesser known video games, the more odd stuff than the mainstream shoot 'em up some racing and whatnot, or whatever it is that's mainstream these days, because I just don't take any notice. 
I seem, see, it seems to be people who are an individual and come up with ideas of their own seem to be the more imaginative and creative, but that's just my opinion. You're welcome to think what you like. And the reason why water is gone is because gravity's being a dick. You see that? The water's just going up. Fuck you, gravity. We need that water. Although I shouldn't really knock gravity. I mean, if we didn't have gravity, water would just float around and we'd get stuck inside it like giant water bottles. After the water has returned to its normal state, you are now free to continue on with the rest of your journey. And it's the first time you get introduced to these little guys. I'd have to say these are my favourite enemy of the game. They're like these noseless elephant bomb things, mice, blowy uppy short fused dudes. After you've solved the forest puzzles and killed this giant plant thing to save your granny, she'll tell you more story that goes along with the plot, hoping to get some handy information and find out what you need to do next. But the little joker bitch face over there eavesdropped on everything, and he's gonna go back and steal that pendant, which you left at Grandpa Hemorrhoid's house, so you've gotta go back and save him. But we don't have to go through all that forest level again, luckily there's a shortcut through the mountains and ruins, which this just happens to be my most favourite part of the game. Now that you've made it back home, Joker Smiley Teeth decides to blow up your house and steal the pendant. This sparks the next event where you have to fight this boss. This boss? They could have thought of something better. After hearing so many people bitch about this on the internet, I had to relive the experience and... It's not that hard, but I understand your annoying frustration. The swinging log makes this just bearable. I mean, if the log was standing still and, I don't know, it hit the log and you you got to jump over obstacles that are coming the other direction or something like that, I don't know. But the, the idea that the log is constantly swinging is just annoying. Now we've got to go see if Grandpa Hemorrhoid is okay. After Hemogram bites the dust, your goal becomes a lot more than just to save the world, but to get revenge on what happened to Grandpa Butzo. Okay, I'm gonna stop with these butt jokes. It must be a pain in the ass for you, and eventually, you know, this is only gonna bite me in the shit sooner or later. Now, your new journey will take you to the Sun Temple in the sky, and try and prevent the new evil that this bird face thing was talking about. After crawling your way through the puzzle ridden engines and fighting off the forces of light and darkness, you finally reach the top of the Sun Temple, and it's finally time to face off against the Clown Face. I really liked how this fight went down. I mean, the whole 
room changing from light to darkness, you know, all the clouds and stuff, and then changing over to this weird, I don't know, this dark spectrum thing was really good. Puts a nice twist on things, I think. A lot more, you know, refreshing compared to most shit now. After defeating Zipface, the thing you were trying to prevent happens. Summoning a giant castle in the sky that makes bad things happen. Because, you know, that makes sense. Again, this area is full of new and interesting designs and puzzles for you to explore. So in my opinion, this isn't really a bad stage at all. In fact, I'm really digging how this whole area kind of looks like it's in space. I suppose it kind of is, but I like how the crystal rocks form like platforms and stuff. Black sky of the starry lights and... I don't know. I found myself drawn to these kind of levels a lot more often than I realise. After doing this review, I kind of have an epiphany of what kind of game I want to create when I'm older. But that's for another story. But let me tell you, this might not look hard to you, but after you've been playing this for a few hours, shit gets frustrating, believe me. I'm not going to say much about the last fight. Uh, I want you to experience it for yourself, because it's very interesting, uh, and very nice twist on it as well, and... Um, I wouldn't say it pushes you to the limit, like most final bosses should, by the way. Not just shoot it, beyond dead. Um, it's just good, and you should have a look. Or get it, because <laughs> playing the game is a lot more fun than watching it. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to me. You can do that by clicking the button below that says subscribe, and if you do, you'll get the most recent update from my videos, vlogs, and whatnot. And I think that's a pretty good deal, don't you? I'll see you all next time for another video. Hope you have a fantastic day.